Good morning, Marcus Snipers. Welcome back. This is Jesse. We're getting started right at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time yet again. If you're new, awesome. Welcome. If you're uh, returning, cool. Good to see you back. Uh, <clears throat> the first 15, 30 minutes we're going to cover um, today on TGIF. We might go a little bit shorter. Just depends on how the flow is going, see how much time we have uh, and how much energy we have at the end of the day. But uh, <clears throat> first 15, 30 minutes, we're going to go through Bitcoin then all coins then we'll take a look at the indices like the nasdaq uh magnificent seven and anything and uh, probably the bitcoin miners as well probably take a look at those again and anything else that jumps out at us uh <clears throat> the second half of the live stream put in your requests early early bird gets the worm because we're getting more and more comments as we get going and um put in all the details let me know what the ticker symbol is let me know if it's crypto or stock let me know if you're long and short or what's your plan of attack is over there, what you're looking at. And that way we can search for it quickly and then we can talk about it in uh, better detail. So with that, let's get let's get it going. Right. So Bitcoin, uh, before we get going, this is the Bitcoin chart, right? This is the daily chart. The last sell signal was on Friday the 12th. So here we are one week later. Uh, the trending dots are still red and trending downward. Uh, it's still currently bearish on the daily chart, uh, but there are a lot of positive signs that we're going to get into today, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, is is it time to buy the dip? Right? Is it currently still is buy the dip season? In my personal opinion, and we'll find out if if uh, we're getting closer and closer to that over here. So, Caesar, good afternoon, happy Friday. Yep, happy Friday, Henderson. Oh yeah, Flex, Flex Henderson. Uh, Shooter, by the way, good morning. Good morning, my man. All right, good to see everyone back here. Woo, before we do it, before we get going hardcore on the charts, let's get over here and uh, help me, help you, help me. And but uh, smash that like button. And uh, here, see, there we go. We found one. Uh, smash the like button, smash that repost button, and throw in a quick comment. All that, we did that in under 10 seconds. All we need you to do is spend 10 seconds of the 10 minutes that you spend on this live stream. 10 seconds of the 10 minutes that you spend, whether you're on the Twitter X app or YouTube. We got uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers on here as well. And you could do the same thing over on YouTube. So imagine that you could do the same thing over on YouTube. So with that, let's get rocking and rolling. Before we get going, uh, again, we got this alert yesterday over not just the discord right unfortunately fortunately you have to be a recorded coaching member to get this bot alert it's included in the 79 dollar package the ogs the recorded coaching members have been there you know for more than a year basically have uh uh still on the 49 dollars a month but you can get pretty close to that with the 660 for a year uh, we continue to get the yearly signups to save, I think it's like 30%. They save 30%. So still cheaper to be an original member, uh, but a close second is paying for the year. And those original members have been there one year or two years already. So uh, it's basically getting the same price as them or pretty close uh, by paying the 660 So yesterday at 5.01 p.m. Uh, after the daily candle close, the 2.10 2.1 crypto and stock screener gave us a potential buy signal on BTC. That's not enough to make a decision, but it gives us an early alert to go to the charts, take a look at the charts and chart it out if it's a potential, if it's going to be a buy or not. Could you buy off of it? Sure, you could buy off of it, but it's only a potential buy. And I labeled it potential uh, buy for a reason is because I wanted uh, to alert the members that, hey, it looks like we could see a buy signal in the near future. Uh, and then make sure your strategy and everything is dialed in over there. Lawrence, welcome back, Lawrence. Leo Ra, hello, Jesse. Yep, uh, let's go, Glitch. All right, Glitch, let's go. Let's go, everybody. So we got a bot alert for a potential buy on BTC yesterday. Probably, I... I didn't even take a quick look, but probably on a lot of other assets too, because we get the daily alerts. But I 
uh, specifically just look for the Bitcoin one. And by the way, if you're set up in the Discord under Recorded Coaching, you have access to this channel. And then uh, you could set up alerts, whether you're looking at it on your phone or uh, there, there's other ways you can set up the alerts too. So you can be notified on your phone of the alert uh, if you know how to set up the alerts and stuff like that. So with that, uh, yesterday recorded coaching members received a Bitcoin potential buy alert in the Discord based on the daily chart. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's get into it. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. We've been saying that for six minutes now, right? We're getting six minutes. TGIF. Uh, so let's put the drawings on. Uh, some things that we do know. Uh, let's see. I, I took a screenshot of this probably 30 minutes ago. So we got 10 hours remaining until uh, the Bitcoin having right? 65 blocks. There's different estimates out there, but seems like it's pretty dialed in now. So about 10 hours from now, uh, we're getting closer and closer and closer to the Bitcoin having. So did Bitcoin find support at target two? Here, let's uh let's take this off. Uh, did it find I removed target one just for visual purposes? Uh, but one daily candle down, wick down, a second one, a third one, a fourth one, five wicks down to target two. Never closed within target two and never closed below target two. Right. So as of right now, Bitcoin has found support on five different daily candle uh, closes and wicks, right? So uh, it has not closed below target two. That is a bullish move, in my opinion. Uh, that That's like one, right? Of course, we got the potential buy alert yesterday. That that would be number one. Number two, we're looking at it could be finding support at target two. Uh, and other reasons why I posted in the Discord, obviously, I'm not going to show it in the live stream, but other reasons why on uh, RSI, all that stuff, uh, other positives that the bottom could be in on Bitcoin. We've been saying the bottom could be in, uh, but we want to see how the candle closes are today, tomorrow. And of course, you know, it's still below. So here are the cautions, right? The bottom could be in, but here are some of the cautions. It's still below the trading dots. Uh, it's still currently bearish as of right now. There's no uh, buy signal on the daily chart, but the ship could be getting turned around. We'll see how it closes. It's still like, well, how many, how many hours? Five, uh, blah, blah, blah. Nine hours remaining, right? Still nine hours left in the daily candle. So a lot can happen. So we're going to kind of wait and see how it plays out. But the next possible buy the dip, whether it was going to be here, here, or here, right? So we don't know. But the next possible buy the dip is going to look like that. So could it be something where, you know, came came down like this, comes back up, gets rejected, puts in a higher low, and it comes out like that? That could be a very possible scenario. The cautions are there for a reason because it's possible it comes up like this, hits support. I runs into resistance. Sorry, <laughs> runs into resistance. And then comes back down, and then maybe that's the buy the dip scenario, or it comes down all the way down here, and then that's the bu next buy the dip scenario. So uh, the cautions are there. There are signs of a possible reversal. There are signs of the bottom is in. And uh, remember, the higher time frames are still bullish and ultra bullish. The daily chart is not bullish, but the monthly chart is still. You know, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Kind of show you what I'm talking about. The weekly chart is uh, currently still bullish, still above the trending dots. Could be a similar move to over here, right? Where it comes back down, even spikes below it, spikes below it, still closes back above, and then it takes a week or two for it to get going in the correct direction again. Too early to say. Uh, the monthly chart is still uh ultra bullish as of right now, right? Uh, still bullish as of right now. There is a pending reverse candle, but what we did talk about is that the month isn't over. So there's still a lot of time left on the monthly candle. This pretending, this pending, pretending, this pending reversal candle 
may may disappear. It may not be a reversal candle by the time the month closes. It could be something similar to this candle over here. Uh, currently, it kind of looks like this candle right here. So it's, it's too early to say. But on the daily chart, there are signs of a potential that the bottom is in, uh, starting to flip around. And uh, we will see how the monthly candle closes. We'll see how the weekly candle closes on Sunday. And of course, the next couple of days, we'll see how uh, Bitcoin daily chart closes as well. So there are some positive signs on the daily chart. It's not just down only. Some of the other, and this is still by the dip season, in my personal opinion, as of right now, if the monthly candle were to close with a reversal, we might have to think, start thinking uh, otherwise, or the weekly chart starts to look bearish, or the daily chart continues to trend downward, uh, along with the higher time frame starting to reverse back around. We'll have to keep an eye on it, right? So there are signs, but there are still cautions as of right now on the daily chart. It. You know, you can make a case for both, right? So we're going to stay neutral. We're going to stay neutral. We are going to stay neutral. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. Let's just always make that clear on every single live stream. Every post, obviously, is not financial advice. Obviously, for educational purposes only. And we're just taking a look at this together. Uh, Iova is SMCI down from here. Uh, we can take a look at it. Good morning, Johnny C. Long time market sniper. Good to see you back here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Oh, I'm sure some of the altcoins will look similar. So we'll take a look at those as, as well. There's something else. Oh, I want to talk about. Yeah. Another positive sign is that the Bitcoin miners, some of them, two of them had pending buy signals. Maybe there's more, but the ones that are on my watch list. <laughs> the ones that are on my watch list had two pending, two of them had pending buy signals yesterday. Uh, they didn't close with a buy signal. And then those same two also had, also have pending buy signals today as well. So we'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll take a quick peek. And um, so those are also positives. Uh, but some other cautions is that the VIX was bullish. Uh, it's been bullish currently still is bullish. That's not good for the overall market and it's usually risk off. Uh, you know, we'll trade each chart individually, but that that's a caution. The NASDAQ going through a correction is a caution. So those are all cautions to be aware of. Of course, we'll trade the Bitcoin chart individually, but those are also cautions, right? So caution, 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 right? There's several cautions I listed out in the Discord as well. And even over on the Twitter X app on that uh, post from this morning. Where is it? Uh, yeah, right here, right? So higher time frames are still bullish. Uh, maybe I didn't put it on the, I thought I did. Uh, there's, there's still cautions, right? So anyways, I, I posted in the Discord. So let's keep going. Let's get into the altcoins. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Still bearish on the daily chart as of right now. Uh, so again, could have found support at target four, right? Could have found support at target four. We kind of drew this out yesterday and, uh, could this be the low? Sure. It could be spiked all the way back down in the target four again, and, uh, could play something out similar to like this. Maybe it puts in a higher low and then that is the next possible buy the dip scenario over there on ethereum solana could the bottom be in sure sure it could be in i uh, saw a potential buy alert on the bot for solana as well so it's possible right it is possible it's flipping around it's possible we get that next buy the dip opportunity you can see the trending dots are kind of lining up with this uh downward trend line as well so maybe we're going to see it get back above here and we get a pending buy signal all at once after a potential buy. So we will see. It's too early to call it as of yet. Uh, Solana, Chainlink, Near, they're all going to look similar. You know, came all the way back down below target four, is back above it. Never closed below target four on Near. Uh, Dot, 
looks like it closed well below target four, right? So uh, a lot of these altcoins did go much lower and uh, we're right around target five as well. Remember, it was getting oversold on some of these altcoins and there was even a reverse candle. Doesn't mean there couldn't be lower prices. Doesn't mean there couldn't be bullish divergence that gets formed, meaning lower prices and then a possible reversal after that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep our finger on it. Uh, but sand was getting oversold, had a reverse candle. Uh, file coin was getting oversold, right? Huge wick down to five dollars, already back up to six dollars as of right now. This was uh, this is like the higher probability uh, breakout trend line, and then this is a more aggressive that's a very aggressive downward trend line. Uh, all go similar thoughts, right? Over oversold multiple reverse candles, uh, a lot of wicks getting bought up here. A lot of wicks, so still doesn't mean the bottom is in for sure. There are positive signs that the bottom is in, but me personally, I still wait for higher probability reversals, even if that means buying in a little bit higher. I just would rather take you know my strategy a little bit different. I just rather be patient and I would rather see it unfold. And because it could always bounce up like this, right? Come back down, put in a higher low. And then what did I miss out on, right? I didn't really miss out on anything because you got a low, then you get a potential higher low over here, right? Uh, even if you start getting into a buy signal over here, it could still come back down, put in a higher low up here. And really it's like, it's almost like kind of insurance, right? I'd rather pay a little insurance uh, for a higher probability reversal uh, than to buy this wick down here, have it come all the way up, come all the way back down, buy it again, buy this wick here, come all the way up, come all the way back down, right? So, but even if you took this buy, as long as you had a stop loss in, you're probably okay with it. So you could you could manage the risk on the wicks, but what, which wicks are you picking? Are you picking this wick? Probably. Are you picking this wick? Probably. Are you picking these wicks? Probably. Are you picking all of these wicks? Probably. 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 I mean, that's not a strategy for me, right? That's not a strategy for me. So uh, that you know, you could have your own strategy, but that's just not my strategy. I'm not. I'd rather. I'd rather take maybe a swing here, and then take the next swing, right? So then I only took two swings. Uh, you take a swing here, worked out perfectly, right? Take a swing here, probably break even or or small loss, right? Uh, if you manage your stop loss and to break even, and then there's nothing, and then you're waiting for the next one. So that's more my strategy. That's what I would do on Algo. Uh, Mana, don't follow me though. Don't follow me though. I'm just a uh, YouTuber, Twitter X <laughs> Uh Mana was getting oversold, right? Cardano was getting oversold. Rari uh, hasn't been oversold as of yet. Still could have some room to the downside. Huge wick right there. But uh, could the bearish divergence is clear, right? We talked about bearish divergence followed by a reversal candle. Uh, that bearish divergence could be cleared, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to come down lower. It possibly could come down lower. But we do have higher targets, right? We do have higher targets. So this will still be a potential buy the dip scenario. Uh, oh, let's change this back to white over here and move this back down to two. Uh, so you still have that. You could probably go even more, build out a more aggressive downward trend line that would probably line up with the trending dots a little bit better. So that's kind of how I see it over here, right? That's kind of how I see it over here. Uh, playing out or moving it over like that. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, the bearish divergence most likely has been cleared already. And in my personal opinion, there was bearish divergence followed by a reverse candle then a sell signal, but kind of let it go through its uh, correction mode. It's still trending downward as of right now. It was kind of lagging time-wise, right? It was kind of lagging time-wise. Doesn't mean that because the higher time frames are still bullish, doesn't mean this one could actually V-shape out, right? It's possible this one V-shapes out, but uh, maybe it takes a little bit longer for uh, it to get going. And uh, 
maybe the other altcoins and Bitcoin kind of leads the way to the upside. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, Matic was uh, getting oversold, had a reverse candle, still currently oversold as of right now. Adam oversold, SHIB, Doge, right? The next possible buy the dip scenario was laid out way early, way early, right? Way early, <laughs> extremely early, right? We laid it out. We talked about the bearish divergence. We talked about the reversal candle. We talked about a lower high and is that that is the higher probability. And then four targets got hit to the downside and uh, still trending downward as of right now in Doge. Micro strategies breaking down from target three. Is it going to hit target four or will it find support at target three? We don't know. It's too early to say as of right now, but it is currently breaking down. It is down 2% today. It is back below $1,200 as of right now. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Let's switch gears. Let's get over to the NASDAQ. Woo! Wee! <laughs> uh, you know, so it's breaking down, right? The all-time all time high was put over here at 18700 We do have a higher ANF target around that $20,000 that still has not been hit. We don't know if it's going to get hit or not. Uh, it's still by the dip season until it's not. If we start getting Canada closes back below target four, then it's probably not by the dip season anymore, right? So we will kind of change our thinking. But uh, there is bearish divergence through this whole time period. Then there is a sneaky lower high. And then after that last sell signal, price came all the way back down, hit target one. It's trending towards target two right now. And uh, the bearish divergence hasn't been cleared yet, in my opinion, right? So doesn't mean it couldn't get a bounce first. Seems like the market makers love to uh, front run my target sometimes, right? Front run my target sometimes, maybe puts in a lower high and then comes back down, right? Doesn't usually doesn't happen all at once. Uh, you know, Manu will blame the black swan event again, right? But we had bearish divergions uh all the way here, right? So yeah, you could you could say black swan does this or does that, but if you just look at the charts, right? You got bearish divergence followed by a lower high after it was overbought after there was bearish divergence after this massive move from the pivot at on October 26th all the way up you could say it was overdue for a correction uh so you can blame the black swan if you want but you'll get a lot of the black swan calls out there now uh so you know if you're calling black swans because you didn't see it coming you could probably you probably should update your strategy right you should probably update your strategy we're welcoming you it's not too late to become a market sniper. <laughs> uh, so we don't know. Maybe it just comes straight down his target two, kind of find support and it comes back up. And it's possible it could hit the bottom of target two and clear out the bearish diversion. So we don't know for sure if target three is going to get hit. We don't know for sure if target four is going to get hit. We don't have a magic crystal ball, right? We don't have a magic crystal ball. We're just doing the best that we can. And, uh, Target two has not even been hit yet. So we don't know. It it could find support target two and bounce and, and uh rally up to longer term ANF target one. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We're gonna be honest. We don't know. We don't we don't try to yeah, we sometimes we have some bold takes or whatever. Uh, but but we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. We just try to stack the probabilities in our favor and recognize what uh maybe some corresponding corresponding, maybe some uh, what, what's the word for it? Uh, yeah, we'll just say corresponding uh, or uh, assets that look similar. We'll just say assets that look similar to uh, other assets to see what they're doing. Maybe there's a canary in the coal mine, whether it's crypto or stock or whatever. Uh, NASDAQ has just flipped ultra bearish as we speak on the daily chart. So uh, probably it seems like Target 2 could probably get hit today. Uh, if it remains oversold, aka ultra bearish, aka sometimes when the magic happens, uh, if that were to happen, you know, uh, we could see lower prices today. So the NASDAQ just flipped ultra bearish on the daily chart. SQQ just flipped ultra bullish, right? Closing in on target one over here. 
what a breakout that was on SQQQ. Woo-wee. The inverse of QQQ ETF is the Ultra Pro Short SQQQ. And uh, we were talking about it. We were covering it. Had a buy signal. Had a breakout here at under $11. And now it's ultra bullish and it is climbing towards target one. Woo, what a good time it is to be a market sniper, no matter what's happening in the markets. Uh, Iova dropping sniper and all for the plebs. Recorded coaching, baby. Oh, yeah. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Tesla John. Appreciate that. Jesse, please look at Ian. Can we look at this yesterday? I feel like we looked at this yesterday. Was that you that requested yesterday, or is this a new request? Were, and were you on the were you on the live stream yesterday? Remember, remind me. I always get ENG and ING always mixed up on which ones I'm charting. Let me know if we already covered it yesterday. Uh, it doesn't mean I won't cover it again. So just be honest. <laughs> but it will impact how much time I put into it. Uh, SQQ is ultra bullish over there. Uh, not good for the markets if if you're into the that sort of thing. Uh, SP 500. We had that A and F target appear that never got hit. Right. As of right now, it's uh, you know similar thoughts to the Nasdaq bearish divergence, reversal candle, lower high breakdown. Target one's been hit so far. Dow Jones came down, hit target two, bounced back up, still trending downward as of right now. Uh, has cleared out the bearish divergence, in my personal opinion. Has cleared out the bearish divergence. Doesn't mean it can't go lower. Doesn't mean it can't hit target three. Doesn't mean it won't fill this gap over here. Doesn't mean it can't go to target four. Uh, Russell 2000, not only hit target two, got very close to target three, spiked below the 200 week moving average, and uh, still bearish on the daily chart. Uh, 10 year yields, is it going to find, is it going to flip this resistance target four into support? We talked about that all the way back here. Would it come up and hit target four? And if so, would it flip uh, resistance into support? Seems like it kind of is, but it's too early to say as of right now uh, if it is or not. If it does, then we have this arrow pointing upward, come back up and retest 5% possibly if it does. And then we'll see if it comes up and hits longer term target three. As of right now, you kind of got like this longer term upward trend line like this. And uh, you can kind of move like visually, you kind of see how how we do it over here in real time, right? Still in uptrend, still above the trending dots, right? So uh, we'll see how it plays out. Kind of flat today overall. After breaking down, uh, down to 4.5%, kind of flat. Ooh, dollar still bullish on the daily, weekly, and monthly chart. VIX still bullish, spiked all the way up. Remember. We circled this 200-week moving average when price is down here at the bottom. We circled all these higher lows, and we are, we are wondering if it would ever come back and retest the 200-week moving average. It did, right? We were wondering if it was going to hit target four. It did. We were wondering if it was going to re-hit target three after it spiked up February 13th. It did. So – uh, these homemade drawn arrows aren't as good, but they still work the same. Uh, target three, target four, 200 week moving average. What did we say on the live streams? If it gets rejected off of the 200 week moving average, that's what the perma bulls want to see. If it flips the 200 week moving average into support, that is what the perma bears want to see. So the VIX is still bullish on the daily chart, up 6% today. VIX is still bullish on the weekly chart. We talked about this on the live streams. Uh, There's a weekly buy signal back here early April and still bullish on the weekly chart, right? Again, perma bulls want, do not want to see the 200-week moving average get flipped, right? Perma bulls do not want to see that. A candle close above this downward trend line makes it a higher probability that we could see the 200 week moving average also flip. It closes today, right? This weekly candle closes today. Maybe it doesn't happen, right? Maybe it closes above, gets rejected from the 
200 week moving average. This is this is the bullish case, right? Comes all the way back down, right? Comes all the way back down for the next couple months. Battles, battles, and then comes out like that, right? That is possible, right? So you've got uh, a low, you got a possible higher low, and then maybe it'll put in another higher low. Uh, and that would be like another warning sign for, uh, hey, prices are going to start breaking down. Maybe it could be something like that. So woo-wee. Uh, the the perma bears want it to happen straight away, right? Per- Perma bears just wanted to go straight up and the market crashes back down to uh, much lower prices. And the perma bear, perma bulls wanted to come all the way back down and stay down here forever, right? It's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. It's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. But that is what you will be watching over there on the VIX. Let's keep going. Let's get back on the daily chart and uh, let's take a look at gold. Uh, It's been on a rip, right? It's been overbought uh bearish divergence right bearish divergence rsi sell signal uh could be getting a macd bearish crossover soon never hit this higher target as of yet uh not too far above it could pierce it we don't know but there's bearish divergence on gold and what a move that was right that was a nice move people are starting to get very bullish on uh gold right probably starting to FOMO in. And if it does go through a correction, uh, you can see that, you know, eyeball test, probably target one, probably target two, probably target three, probably target four, something like that, right? So that would be a big move. Uh, it's been a big move to the upside and uh, kind of watch like, you can probably watch like that. Uh, maybe it takes some time to play out, right? And then you got to kind of build it out like this, right? Kind of build it out. So that still uptrend, trading dots still up, ultra bullish, even though there is bearish divergence. So we'll keep an eye on gold and silver is probably very similar thoughts over there. Uh, yep, very similar thoughts. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, what else? Oh, let's go to the Magnificent Seven and we'll circle back. We're already 32 minutes into it. How are we doing on lights? 32 minutes into it. Come on, come on. Help me out over here. Help me out over here. Four likes. Oh my. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let's refresh. Let's refresh. Let's let's not jump on your case yet. It's probably at least 10. There, there we go. We got 10. <laughs> uh we have how many viewers? Right on Twitter X app. We have 795 viewers on Twitter X app, and we only have 10 likes, right? Can we get at least uh what is it? I'm trying to do math here. <laughs> Can we get 10% likes? That would be awesome if we got 10% likes. We'd have 70 likes over there. Uh, so help me, help you, help me. Smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and we'll keep it going. Helps me keep keep me motivated on a Friday, right? If we if we stay motivated with 50 likes on the Twitter X app or YouTube, I will flip on the hat backwards and we'll go through a lot more charts and we'll we'll pump this out for another hour. If not, we'll probably start cutting it out and uh Go uh, take a look at it. Uh, we'll shorten it up a little bit. But here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Help me. Help you. Help me. We'll, we'll check back in about 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes to smash that like button. Help me out. And let's get 50 likes over there. Uh, let's see. NVIDIA continues to break down, right? Continues to break down. We, pull, we call this out from the very top, right? March 8th. We didn't know for sure if it was going to be the top, right? We didn't know with 100% certainty because you could have called the top back here, could have called the top back here, could have called the top back here, and then eventually you're right. And then eventually you'll be the hero. Who cares about that? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? We want to stack the probabilities in our favor, right? We want to be successful swing traders more than we care about being right. So successful swing traders more than being more than being the hero and calling the tops, right? Calling the tops, calling the tops, calling the tops. But we did say on this top here, there was a pending reverse candle, which turned into a reverse candle. There was a pending in bearish engulfing candle. There was bearish divergence, right? Said there could be additional bearish divergence. There was. 
Then you can see it's starting to flatten out on the trending dots. Then you can see candle closes uh, below the trending dots, right? Way back here. Candle close. Well, we cover this on the live streams, right? Candle closes below, breaking down from the trend line. Uh, sell signal, trending dots, starting to trend downward and trending red, right? Still battling, still battling until it doesn't. Hit target one, hit target one, hit target one, target one, target one. Now it's breaking down from target one. The probabilities are continuing to increase that we're going to go down and hit target two. Uh, bearish divergence, right? Bearish divergence probably doesn't get cleared until below target two, maybe even lower, right? Maybe even target three where the gap is. I'd have to take a look at a deeper dive on it. Uh, gap is at sub $700 on NVIDIA, currently at 800 it was pumping up here to uh, 973, and this all the YouTubers and Twitter X app. Nvidia was going to 1500. Nvidia is unstoppable, and maybe it does go to 1500, but not before a correction, right? It was overdue for a correction. It went parabolic from 500 dollars, uh, and from 500 dollars, it just it broke out here at 490 and just went parabolic, right? So it's not sustainable. Going parabolic isn't sustainable. If you caught that move from 500 uh, all the way up, that's amazing. At what point do you take profits, right? Is it bearish? Is it a reverse candle followed? Is it bearish divergence followed by a reverse candle? Is it a lower high that gets put in? Is it a sell signal? At what point do you finally take profits if you bought this dip over here at 490, right? So... That's up to you. You have to decide. And then did you stick to your plan or did you get caught up in the FOMO, right? Did you get caught up? Well, now it's breaking down from target one. So target one's been hit. Uh, probabilities are increasing in target two. We got this gap down here. And we won't even talk about the 20% gap down at $360. We won't even talk about that yet. <laughs> you get uh, price breaking down from target four. Then we'll talk about the $360 gap again, I'm sure. We will see how it plays out. Meta down 4%. Has another pending sell signal. We had bearish divergence. Never hit ANF target. Uh, one over here. Bearish divergence. Lower high. Looks like target one eyeball test was hit. We got a gap down here at 400. Amazon. Amazon bearish divergence. Uh, this could have been a sneaky lower high over here. Let's see. Let's take a look. Not really, right? Hasn't really given a lower high yet. So didn't play out similar to NVIDIA. It just dropped straight down, right? So we had bearish divergence followed by reverse candle. Have I mentioned how much I love our bearish divergence followed by reversal candle? Let me say that again. Have I told you how much I love bearish divergence or bullish divergence followed by reverse candle? Ooh, wee. it's a good time to be a market sniper. I didn't have these, I didn't have it dialed in like this when I was able to quit mortgage and real estate early 2021. And I was smashing Bitcoin swing trades with 10x leverage with uh six digit swing trades. I didn't have those kind of tools back then. Oh man, it feels good. <laughs> feels good. I've never had a seven digit swing trade win in my career. I never had a six digit loss swing trade in my career but i've had multiple six digit swing trade wins in my career and a lot of that is thanks to bitcoin i appreciate bitcoin uh bitcoin changed my life for many different reasons uh it was so much easier to trade bitcoin 10x leverage on the daily chart than it was to trade options and uh man i thank bitcoin for that i thank bitcoin for that i thank bitcoin for that Woo wee look at that uh Amazon, bearish divergence, followed by a reverse candle, closing below the trending dots. I mean, trending dots are trending downward, right? Expect a bounce, right? Expect bounce. Uh, but you got a gap here, got a gap here. So uh, probably probably something more like maybe even touch that, battle all the way back up, maybe puts in a lower high, and then comes back down, right? So we'll see how it plays out. There's been no lower high as of yet. Expect a lower high to get a more defined lower high to get put in, uh, which is a higher probability short 
if you're doing Amazon, but we covered this in the Discord. We covered it on the live stream, talking about it right here about uh, Discord member Dallas White private messaging me about his short position uh, and wanted me to double check it for him and get a second pair of eyes on there. That's what the Discord is about. You know, I'd rather have you ask me publicly so that everyone could kind of see it. But if you rather just do it privately, that's fine too. If it's a general question, I'll probably post it in the Discord. If it's uh, not a more public and you ask me uh, privately, I'll just leave it private and or anonymous. But message me on uh, Monday. We talked about it. I gave him a second pair of eyes. I said the bearish divergence followed by the reverse candle. Uh, closes below the trending dots. Uh, the overall market's rolling over, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I'm going to have to check back in with Dallas, see if uh, he's still holding a short. Uh, he has options, options short on Amazon. Uh, bought 10 puts on it. So I'm thinking he's doing pretty good right now, right? He's doing pretty good. I personally didn't short it. Uh, I've already in positions that I'm I'm feel good about. Uh, so 5% on option puts, I think he's doing pretty good over there. So, uh, we'll have to check in with him, see if he held it, see if he's still holding it over there. Get an update. Ooh, wee. Woo. Dang Microsoft. <laughs> uh, it's not good. Uh, it's not good. Unless you're into that sort of thing. Bearish divergence, possible lower highs, breaking down, sell signal, target one. Probabilities are increasing. It's going down lower to target two. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Uh, but eventually, expect bounces along the way. Tesla continues to trend downward. Tesla still in a bear market. Tesla may come back down and hit target three, right? Still has not hit target three. Front ran my targets from way back here. I put those targets on way back here in uh, January 2022. Two years later, still have not hit those targets yet. We don't know if it will or not. Breaks starts breaking down from target two, uh, or is this target four? This, I think it's target four. This is target three. Uh, this is target four. Never hit target four, right? We'll see. Tesla's still down one percent today. Apple. Oh my goodness. Did it hit target? No, it has not hit target three yet. Oh my goodness, right? So target three, closing in on target three on Apple. That's not good for the overall markets, right? We talked about this bearish divergence on the weekly chart, uh, a lower high on the weekly. This is the daily chart, but the weekly chart also had a lower high. This is what I was talking about over here was that there is bearish divergence on Apple, a lower high. And uh, it is bearish and a weekly candle close lower than 168 on Apple. Oh my goodness. That confirms additional lower high, takes out that pivot point. That's not good for Apple lovers over there, right? Uh, that is not good. Just says that uh, most likely, obviously, we're so close to target three. Uh, you know, it just seems like we're going to hit target three, possibly target four. And could this be the first time uh, Apple retests the 200-week moving average at 152 since January 2019? Since January when it wicked down in 2019 at $35, will it do it again? Will it go lower than the 200-week moving average similar to Tesla, similar to a lot of other stocks? Will it go below the 200-week moving average? If so... Many long-term investors will say that it's risk off and they will be really late to the party, that it will be back into a bear market uh, below the 200-week move average. So it's a lot of we don't knows as of yet, but we will continue to talk about it. Google could be uh, you know, lagging time-wise, right? Looks like bearish divergence. Looks like a possible lower high on Google. You got a gap at 144 and a half over there. Woo -wee. How are we doing? How are we doing? 44 minutes. How are we doing? Shooter, by the way. What are you laughing at, Shooter, by the way? What are you laughing at? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Bitcoin having. Price is getting halved. <laughs> no, it's not. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. 
Uh, Google, Google, Google. All right, let's switch back. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin miners real quick. Hot. Uh, still trying to find bottom. Hive was getting oversold, pending a reverse candle. Uh, still trying to find bottom. MIGI back above the trending dots, right? Back above the trending dots. Let's see. Let's kind of. Yeah, that I like that one better, right? I like that one better. Up 8% today. Could we see a pending buy signal on MIGI in the near future? Yes, I talked about that. I covered it uh, over here. Hold on. Let's do a quick refresh. We said 10 minutes. Uh, 17. Ooh, we're getting up there. We're getting up there. Smash that like button. What if we get 50 likes? I'll keep going. I'll flip the hat on backwards. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll flip the hat on backwards. If uh, we can get 50 likes and we'll keep going hard in the paint for 14 more minutes. Uh, if not, we're going to probably wrap this up. Let's see. I Hold on. Hold on. I posted this. Uh, let's go back over here. I posted it. Where did I post it? Oh, right here. Right here. Uh, yesterday with no buy signal today, we have another pending buy signal on Wolf and CLSK. Could these Bitcoin miners be the, be next to have pending buy signals? Iris Energy, BitFarms, and MIGI. And uh, so I posted that over there. Um, and we could see a pending buy signal in the near future on MIGI. BitFarm, maybe. Uh, CLSK had a pending buy signal. Here we are. Had a pending buy signal yesterday. And then closed without a buy signal, right? Closed without one. Uh, could it put in a lower high, right? That's something to be uh, aware of. You do have a gap up here. And you got a gap down here. So even on this pending buy, just be aware that you got a big gap down here. You got bearish divergence, right? And uh, no defined lower high. So be careful, right? So if you do take this buy on CLSK, you know, obviously it's not financial advice. But if you do take this buy on CLSK, make sure to have a stop loss put in. Make sure to try to move your stop loss to break even and or be aware to like take profit if this puts in a lower high and starts to come back down, right? So it is possible it puts in a lower high and then comes all the way back down, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, but it could be the next buy the dip scenario. So that is how you kind of play it out like that. Uh, probably could have been even more aggressive, I guess, or been on a lower time frame. Uh, something like that. Uh, let's move it like that. There we go. Uh, so it probably could have been a little bit more aggressive, uh, and or on a lower time frame, but that's kind of how it, it could be. But what we would want to see, right, on a on a taking a buy is it comes out, flips this into resistance, flips the resistance in support, and it comes up and hits this target and beyond, right, and takes out this pivot point. That's what you hope for in a bull. This is what you're hoping for on a bear, right? Uh, and shorting that bounce. So uh, there you go. Marathon Digital looks different, right? Uh, maybe maybe it's lagging time-wise, right? Maybe it's lagging time-wise over there. Riot looks different. Maybe it's lagging time-wise. Maybe it'll take some time. Maybe it's a couple days behind. We Going to Make It uh, looks different, right? Wolf has a pending buy signal. We we posted this uh, we posted this yesterday. There was a pending buy signal yesterday, and then closed without one. Now it's back above the trading dots and the downward trend line. So uh, pending buy signal on Wolf. Irish Energy could have a pending buy signal in the near future. Uh, was this is that the higher low? Right, we're we're trying to find out if it was going to put in a higher low, a low possible higher low. We don't know uh, over here. It's, it's pretty choppy, right? It's pretty choppy. We'll see. Uh, Cypher, Cypher mining over here. Uh, maybe it's lagging time wise as well. So that is the Bitcoin miners. Uh, Daryl, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome back. 9.49 a.m. Uh, what else? What else? Anything else? Oh, U.S. oil. U.S. oil, right? U.S. oil. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart was looking similar to the dollar, right? Uh, looked like it was breaking out. 
maybe it's back testing and then takes off to the upside similar to the dollar right so i want to point that out it's still bullish on the weekly chart for uh us oil and the dollar right where's the dollar at here it is so it looks very similar it had a buy signal on the weekly chart for the dollar had this bigger downward trend line came back to back back test it for a couple of weeks and then took off to the upside so seems like us oil is looking similar to the dollar and uh could be lagging a couple of weeks behind the dollar we don't know we don't know uh what else what else what else what else what else what else, what else? What else? there was a pending buy signal on uh natural gas daily chart uh probably not anymore so we'll keep an eye on it over there all right, I think that's about it. We'll get into some requests over here. Man, it took 51 minutes to get into it all. And uh, we're going to at least cover who was first? Who was first? Uh, SMCI and then Shooter, by the way, ENG. So we're at least cover those two requests, uh, but not seeing how many likes that were uh, getting smashed over there. We didn't hit 50. 1,000 1, viewers and we, we can't even hit 50 over there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. SMCI. Super microcomputer. Haven't looked at this one in a few days. Woo! Super, super microcomputer doesn't look so super today. Uh, I don't see bearish divergence, right? I don't see bearish divergence. Uh, it was overbought. I don't see bearish divergence there. Uh, doesn't mean it, that's not the top, right? There is some, let's see, even the histogram was going down. Uh, had an RSI sell signal on Monday, right? And this could be your candle close below the trending dots. You could probably see the trending dots start to uh level out kind of like that and start trending back down right you kind of see like the trajectory of it right so maybe you see a pending uh i don't know pending sell signal in the near future maybe not uh had a big had a big move up no divergences yet uh but could be breaking down right could be breaking down and it comes back down like this spikes back up right too early too early to say so not not much else really to report on that uh let's see let's but it's breaking down right now so if you were in the last buy signal was back here on i don't know if you can see that might have to zoom in a little bit especially if you're on your cell phone i'm not sure if you can see that but the buy signal was at 51 dollars on the weekly chart oh this is a weekly chart Oh, this is the weekly chart. <laughs> That's not good for the weekly chart either, right? The last buy signal on the weekly chart was $51. Holy moly guacamole, right? $51 all the way to the top. 2,300% since August 2022, right? What a move that was on the weekly chart. Uh, when would now be a good time to take profits? Is the top in? We don't know for sure. But uh, there's no sell signal on the weekly chart yet. Could in the near future. We don't know yet. Could could uh, come down, bounce, put in bearish divergence. We don't know how it's going to play out. But let's take a look at the daily chart just to kind of like try to get this dialed in. Here's here's the weekly chart, right? Kind of building out this parabolic move on the weekly chart, right? So uh, it doesn't mean it couldn't bounce. Put in a lower high or bearish divergence kind of battle and then come back down and then who knows how it plays out from there right we don't know how it's going to play out but uh is breaking down the weekly chart and let's see let's look at the daily chart uh probably bearish divergence right breaking down right now yeah i'm gonna say guaranteed there's bearish divergence over here at least uh, had that bearish engulfing candle similar to NVIDIA and the reverse candle. But again, multiple multiple reverse candles. And then it looks like a lower high over here, another one over here, another one over here. 
and now it's just breaking down, right? So uh, is bearish on the daily chart after bearish divergence. And uh, so that's what I'm seeing over there on SMCI. 55 minutes. We got five minutes. Uh, yeah. Five minutes to cover ENG. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, man, I'm running out of steam. But I'm definitely going to do it for uh, Shooter, by the way, my man. Please look at ENG. Okay. I think I looked at it yesterday. If, it's probably not going to be a thing that I'm going to look at every single day, right? Probably not a thing. I don't know. There's only so many I'm going to look at on a daily basis. Uh, but yeah, so let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, it looks the same. It looks the same as the other altcoins that I already covered. So I just don't like to be too redundant, right? We looked at, you know, how many, like six, you know, at least probably like 10 of them. We looked at like 10 of them and it looks exactly the same. So here you go. This is this is your uh, here's your updated TA. Ready? Trend line, arrow, green. That's it. <laughs> Hope that helps, shooter. By the way, there you go. You know better than that. You know better than that. You're a long time market sniper. As always, insane charts. Thanks, Doc. Doc, appreciate that. Uh, so, oh, update, Doc. Doc, eighty thousand by March. Ooh. 73,000 was 74,000 was the top. Kind of missed that one. Uh, just missed the January one. Do you have an update of 150,000 Bitcoin by June? Right? Do you have an update? Uh, I got to call you out on that one, Doc Doc. Uh, that's why you don't want to be too set on uh, your predictions, right? Because you could be disappointed. And if, if you're swing trading, then uh, you won't be as disappointed because uh, you'll be swing trading to the upside and the downside over there. With that, Thank you for smashing the like button for the ones that did. Thank you for uh, reposting for the ones that did. Thank you for commenting for the people who did. I appreciate you helping me help you help me with that. I hope you have a good rest of your week weekend. Get off the charts. Uh, Shooter, by the way, you got it. Uh, get off the charts for a brief moment. Get outside. Uh, wifey is uh, heading out of town. I'll be taking her to the airport shortly. She's going back to, she's flying out to Arizona to hang out with my family by myself because they are throwing her a baby shower, right? So baby shower uh, this weekend for my wife. Shout out to my family who would never see this live stream ever. <laughs> Thank you for throwing my wife a baby shower. That's pretty cool. She's got a smaller family. And so they're going to be coming into town in May uh, when I'm out of town. And then next Wednesday. I will be heading to Nashville with the crew, with the boys for our annual trip, but also for my baby shower. <laughs> my baby shower is going to be a little bit more fun uh, with the crew, with my boys, and uh, we'll be having fun on Wednesday, Thursday, a little bit back-to-back uh, -back golf days on Wednesday and Thursday. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do live streams uh, when I'm out of town. Probably not. Uh, so the live stream streak will be broken with that. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Have a good weekend, and we will see you on the next one. I think it's Monday. I think it's Monday.